There I am. <laughs> Thought I'd better add myself. Hello, how is everyone? Welcome, welcome. Um, I don't even know what day it is. Wednesday morning, where I am, nine o'clock. Thank you for all, all for joining me. Just thought I'd jump on and have a quick bit of a, a live and say hello now that I'm feeling a little bit better, being under the weather. Um, who have we got here? Sherry Ives, how are you going? Welcome. Alva Billy, Hi Fi and Interiors, Just JP, Donna Young, Shebel, Sheikh Abu Quasim, is that how I say it? Loyal Tangle, Chip Wellington, Marcel Elaine, Carly of Sydney. Waking up with analog. Ah, how are you going? Waking up with analog. Welcome. Uh, if you didn't see, we did a chat last night. Go and check that out on my channel. Um, yeah, really, really interesting stuff. He goes through all the old newspaper clippings and um, there's some good stuff in there. Hello, Chuckle 8 Mama, uh, Shannon Emerson, Fella B. Thank you all for being here. How are we all? Um, we are getting um close to christmas um we've got like two less than two weeks right what is it 11 days um so we're almost in next year so i hope you're all having um some time off right it's been a pretty pretty full-on couple of years so i'm going to try and get a few weeks off um i hope you all get some time off and time with your family right time and um, give them your presence don't give them presents um, so how is everyone? Hope everyone's doing well. Um, Derek L from Indiana, hello. Just JP is knackered. Um, who is this Sheikh Abu dude? Sorry, mate, but you sound like an idiot. So I'm going to put you in time out. So thanks for coming. And if you've got stupid things to say and dumb questions, um, don't ask them, right? <laughs> Uh, we don't put up with that, that that kind of stuff here. Questions are fine, but um, asking me if I'm a, a Z ionist is just pretty retarded, especially since you obviously don't know who I am. Um, hello, CJDV again. Hello. One of my biggest supporters. Thanks for being here. Uh, Clement. Now, is it Clement? It is. Clement, hello. How are you? Clement Barraza. Barraza. Um, oh, there you go. Sherry Ives has put the link in the description with um, analog. So go check that out, guys. That was a really good chat. We're going to do it again. Um, Campbell River. Oh, is that where you live? BC. All right. That must be a good place. Let's see, I'm working out how to put all these um, comments on screen now. MJ, love to all. Hello. Welcome for being here. Um, no, I agree, right? There's no stupid questions, just stupid people. <laughs> no, there are stupid questions, but I mean, stupid questions are, 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 you know, they're not actual valid questions. When people ask stuff like that, they're not actually asking because they want to know. They're saying it because they're trying to be an idiot. And most of the times they succeed. Um, so there you go. Mr. Paul Cook is here. All right. Everyone go check out Paul's channel, of course. Love Tangle, ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, great, yeah. High vibes, guys. Like, if people want to... See, this is the thing, right? Um, we can all research. You know, but people come up and they ask silly questions when I just sit think, why don't you just go and do some research and get the answer? Because if you constantly ask other people for the answers, then they're not your answers. And they're all going to be wrong for you. So it's not a good idea. But anyway, let's um, <laughs> rant over, right? Um, exactly right. So some are very, very silly. Um, Rhonda Butterfly, hello, hello. Paul Kick, Paul, Paul, Kick. Paul Cook, does your kitty have a name? It? Yeah, I saw you had a new kitty there, Paul. Um, Zilla Zilla, hello, welcome. How are you? Old World Florida, hello. Again, go check out Old World Florida channel, guys, if you haven't. He's been doing some great work. Michael, hello. The stockings were stuffed by the chimney with care. <laughs> yeah, and big Mike, right? Um, yes, uh, we're still working on that um, Rumpel on the Hill. Um, I've just, yeah, I've been a bit sick and behind. And I've got lots of wet, uh, editing to do, so I'm, I'm talking to Gary probably today. 
Um, but we're going to have, yeah, <laughs> I have time issues. I have time issues. I need a, um, a, a like a editor. Zoot Earth, hello, welcome. Um, Northern Saskatchewan, all right, welcome. That's Saskatchewan, CA, Canada. That's Canada, isn't it? I think so. Um, the doc is in the house. Um, you missed question. Yes, um, we're recording one on Friday, Marcel. Another chat with Howdy. If you haven't seen those, go check out uh, my other channel, Spiral Up. I've been doing chats every sort of two, three weeks with Howdy McCoskey, Rules of the Realm, trying to work out what the hell's going on and where we are. One of these good questions. Uh, Wilbert, hello, from the Dutch. All right. So I would love to go up to Dutch land where all the star forts are. No worries at all. I love kitties. Oh, yeah, five. Wow. Cool. I like kitties. Loving your sunshine. Coast of British Columbia. All right, Julie. Julia, how are you going? Welcome. Snowy Buffalo. Missy, welcome. Wow, snow, man. Um, I haven't seen snow in like 20 years snow scares me that's those are right it's all right to be cold if you can ski and do have fun but but, but when, when it's just cold i don't get that i don't understand i think you need to move to warm places um where did all the blue stones come from in melbourne yeah that's a good one i'm, I'm actually doing a bit of work at the moment trying to research all the different quarries and stuff there's not a lot there um what it's looking like though um especially after having a chat with analog last night um it looks like most of this stone was repurposed you know they were finding old walls and things old structures and just ripping them apart um and using them but wh when was this done when was this building done that's another big question isn't it um the channel with howdy is spiral up spiral up um you'll find the link below in the description if you're looking for it that's my my uh, third sort of channel, my little small channel, which needs a bit of work on it. Um, that's where I sort of talk about Campbellosophy and all that kind of stuff. Um, one's up in a time, Australia was Dutch. Yeah, yeah. Um, New Holland, man. New Holland. Uh, Dutch landed on the coast of Western Australia. Um, uh, Hartog, Dirk Hartog, is that right? Back in the 1600s. I was just read it, spiral up. There you go. Um, everyone is awesome. I agree. Everyone is awesome. And so are you, MJ. Um, thank you, Autobot. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, to, to, to share it. Oh, Sherry, it's on you. Chocolate. All right, where are we? I'm trying to get through all these. Man, uh, Sherry has just posted the link to Spiral Up. Thank you. Camel shirt matches your red shorts with flowers. Maybe you guys can get together. <laughs> yeah, we are fashionistas, Paul and myself. We are trendsetters. Trendsetters in the fashion, uh, the fashion niche. We're actually working on a on a channel together. He's going to come on Only Cams. It's going to be Only Cams Fashion with Paul. So it's not really Only Cams, but um, yeah, keep your eye out, guys. New fashion line coming soon. Um, all right, so I do actually have some stuff organized. What do I have? Let me see if I can find it. Um, all right, so I thought we'd just, this, this first book is 1880s. Uh, let me just get it ready. Um, excuse me. Just need to cough. And I hope everyone's feeling well too. I know there's been lots of, sickness and illness and unwellness going around i caught it <laughs> i think i caught everything over the last week um so yeah i hope you're feeling better lots of water all that kind of stuff i've got bloody I've got pills and stuff coming out of everywhere and i haven't even done my hair and makeup so please excuse me all right let's have a look this is going to be um dutch people talking about dutch people uh, in the 1880s, 
So hopefully you can see that. This is the Old London International Health Exhibition. I think I thought it was in Dutchland. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Um, let me move that. Okay. So, and this is held by the London Stereoscopic Company, right? So, um, Paul Cook, I saw you did a live. I didn't catch it all, but I saw you were looking at the old um, tech yesterday. So, there you go, old London Health Exhibition uh, Stereoscopic. So, they're using sound. And let's get into the pictures. So, these are the pictures I just really wanted to show. These are people from the 1880s. Um, not sure what that name is, but I mean, this says that it's in England or in Europe at the very least. Uh, London, stereoscopic, album, blah, blah, blah. Um, check this, this girl's got feathers and things looking kind of Indian, what we would think of, you know, sort of uh, North American Indian, all this stuff around her neck, right? Without, obviously the head looks extremely sort of. Uh, European, sort of Dutch almost. But this stuff, um, you know, very sort of Indian, but also, I guess, um, Gypsy and Berber and all that kind of interesting stuff. So it's interesting the way they dressed back in the 80s, you know, fashion, right? Fashies, fashion. <laughs> um, this lady's definitely looking Dutch. She's got the flying nun hat on and um, not looking too happy. Back in the 1880s. Okay, this is Fries. Fries. Looking a little bit German, I guess, kind of, not really. More sort of um, um, like Ottoman Empire, I guess. Cool hat. But I mean, they just dressed so much more intricately. Look at these little things coming off the side of her hat. What are they for? It's like what horses, it's like horse, horse blinders, blinkers. Oh, come on, internet, work for me, work for me. Okay. Uh, sorry about this, the internet is not deciding to be my friend. Come on, well, this is not not very good viewing, is it? I do have another album here which we're going to look at. Um, let's hope I don't lose the internet. This one is is Egypt, but, but, but come on, what is going on here? Okay, wow. Am I still connected? Yes, that's good. <laughs> um, all right, I'll give it another 30 seconds and I'm changing book. That just doesn't want to... What is going... Oh, here we go. Oh, my gosh. Where are we now? Okay, let's take two. Okay, so... Sorry about that, guys. The internet, all right. Carl photos, so we've got a bit of painting in here. But again, what's with these bonnets, man? Bonnets, eh? Like around the head. All these different headdresses and hats and, of course, the jewellery. And, and we don't really... Now we get caps, right? <laughs> that's, that, that's about the state of our hat situation. Another one again. So is that something to do with the sun? Obviously hand painted these um, pictures. Amsterdam, I see, I knew it was around Amsterdam, Holland. So these are what people look like and dress like in the 1880s. Again, this one looking kind of gypsy Berber, you know, Tartarian even. Lucky horseshoes in her ears. Um, here's a very staunch man. Again, he looks like a Tartarian too. With his suit on and his baggy pants. So what happened to fashion, right? It's like everything. Everything got stripped back. 
Now we have in Amsterdam the Vuz de Utrecht. <laughs> Is that right? It's about really bad. Uh, look at the size of this steeple. Open on the inside, as they always are. I've got a clock on there, but these are what two, at least two story houses. And that's the top of the doorway, man. This thing's massive. Again, I don't know what this has to do with the health. I thought we were supposed to be looking at health. Um, so this is um, Arnhem? Not sure. But again, we can see this everywhere, right? Look at the size of these cathedrals compared to everything else. Now this book, I think right there, we'll go check out Egypt. Here's another one. Classic mud streets no one around we've got like a bit of a photo op with these two tiny people in front of these massive doors a couple more people here and this one actually looks like it might have had some photo manipulation done to it just when you look around the edge it's very white behind here isn't it compared to the foreground That's cool. Entrance to the underworld. Um, again, dirt streets, photo opportunity, no people. Massive buildings everywhere. So this is the 1880s. But it's always the same old story. <coughs> Excuse me. And I mean, this whole juxtaposition of the wood, right? Got all these massive stone buildings in the background and then wooden piers and wooden boats and things. I mean, boats, fair enough. But, um, you know, it's two different styles of building here. Oh, look at this. This has got scaffolding on it. That's a construction photo. Woohoo. Um, that's just... And so this is, you know, what they used to have, right? These nice parks everywhere with fountains. We've still got the remnants of these everywhere, but none of them work anymore. They just destroyed them all. They really don't want us living in nice places, do they? Being relaxed and having nature around us. I think nature is kind of good. This is, again, don't really know, a big building. But you can see the buildings are always fully landscaped you know, completely finished. Um, you know, we just don't do this kind of stuff today, you know. It's, today's society is so throw up. It's almost like they know there's a reset coming so they don't want to put a lot of work into the buildings, right? Because they're going to get knocked over. Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe melted. Big castle on a moat. So the world of 1880s, pretty empty world. There are not many people, right? Photo opportunity here. Got these oversized lights everywhere, dirt roads, same architecture, wrought iron, you know, these balls, it's all the same. And an empty world. And of course, Mind Unveiled's been doing some work on the, the orphans and the, the Cabbage Patch Kids. This is very interesting. I mean, this is where people used to hang out and live, right? Well, you know, <laughs> those who stole the story, at least. The rest of us were working in factories, I think. All right, that looks like it might be the end. And I'm probably going to jump straight into... It doesn't want to load. Egypt. Um, let's have a look at some more old world stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay, everything's freezing up on me. Come on. All oh, right, let's see. Are we going? All right. So this is, uh, again, 1880s 
Egypt. Um, just got some docks here. Not many people around again. All right, so this is uh, Egypt, 1880s. These look like pretty old buildings in ruins, don't they? And look at this tree, just stuff everywhere. What's going on here? A couple of people on the river. I don't think any of, any of these, they've either got flat roofs or, or like, you know, inside the walls or they're all roofless, those houses. Again, it's not a very built-out city, right? Just ruins everywhere. Look at these. And who knows what this is, right? Who knows how far down underground this is? Because it kind of looks like the top of, could be a wall maybe or a temple. And again, no one there, just one dude standing in the mud. You can see the size of these walls too by the size of him. And this is Egypt. You know, we get sort of told Egypt was found, you know, in this kind of pristine, um, you know, um, condition with all the, you know, the temples and the pyramids and that. But I don't think that's what really happened. I mean, check out the size of this pillar. you got some people here. They, 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 they just come up to here. Look at the size of this thing. And why? What? what why just a single pillar? Standing on its own. And of course, we just got these, you know, poor looking people who don't look like they got the tech to even attempt to think of building something like this. But we're, again, we're told that they're the, the native people. Oh, Star Wars, right? Very Star Wars. So again, Egypt, right? Star City, look at these walls. That's what we see everywhere. These bits on top, we see this a lot in India. Not sure what that's all about, but a massive construction. Out the front, we've got the ruins of the town or whatever, where the poor people live, no doubt. And this thing, man, how Star Wars is that? Got all the antiquitech on the top of the spires and domes. And... Not much out on the horizon, so I guess we're not looking at the pyramids at this point, but check that out, right? It's what we see everywhere, these big walled cities. And this is Egypt. There you go, look at the antiquity there. Looks like an array antenna, doesn't it? And look at this, it looks pretty old, it's falling apart. Pretty big oversized building, but again, it's what we see everywhere. And then next to it, you know, we see what they can actually do right there. Strapping up a bit of, you know, tarpaulins and things. This is their level of tech, not, not this. All right, this is uh, the new hotel, right, Cairo, new hotel. Very nice, very old world looking again, very large. Got the same street lights in Egypt that we see everywhere. We just saw them in Amsterdam. Same, you know, wrought iron, same everything. And here's a bit of a shot. I'm guessing this is Cairo, yep. Cairo, um, a view of the pyramids. Where are the pyramids? Oh, okay, there. There we go, we've got the pyramids in there. And Cairo, now just look at these oversized bits sticking up. All right, look at the size of them compared to everything else. Just mad, right? And it's not a very big town back in the 1880s, is it? It's just like a little, you know, little village that's half been swallowed by the desert. I mean, look at this sand dune here. Like the height compared to these walls. Look at them. Like fully half buried. All this stuff half buried in the sand. And then look at the aqueduct, man. Look at this. 
That's a pretty cool aqueduct. Don't know if that's there anymore. Going off, it looks like to a holding tank, a cistern, and the pyramids. Ah, so a street in Cairo. Again, got the Antiquitech here as well. And we can see some of the construction here. Rocks and odd shaped bricks. This looks like a fill of some kind. You know, maybe with the cement or geopolymer holding it all together. It's just sort of crumbling away. Um, but again, you know, in this funny little village on the edge of the desert that's being swallowed, we've still got three story, four story, even maybe masonry, you know, buildings. Uh, of course, we've got palm trees. So this is mosque, the mosque in Cairo. Got our ladder. Don't know what's happening there. They've barred this place off. Probably goes down. Half a door here. Stairs going up. Very sort of not level looking, isn't it? Look at this, all these funny door sizes. Maybe there's three different types of people. And they're suspending something from all, see all these chains. I'm not really sure. Like they're suspending this roof for some reason. Doing something. <coughs> oh, wow, look at this dude. How cool is he? He's like, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I have a stick. I am the boss. Look at my hand on my hip. Listen to me. Um, all right, we've got some hieroglyphs. Someone didn't like them. And again, these guys just not looking like the builders or, you know, even the ancestors of the builders. Because this, this is the other story, right? They're always the ancestors of the builders. But the builders built these amazing, you know, technological feats. And then their ancestors, you know, just living in the desert with no tech at all. You know, they can't do anything really. It's weird how that happens. Yet yeah, we're the epitome, right? We're, we're at the highest point of human evolution, apparently. Um, look at this place, just pretty much messed up and destroyed. Got some old carvings here. Again, these these funny stone walls. And it's just the same stuff we see everywhere. The old world was just moved. We just moved in on top of it. Is pretty much what happened. Did we know how it worked? I don't know. But again, look at this. These buildings just popping up out of the middle of the desert. Look at the foundations here. Walls and things, I mean. And then just this one dude just standing looking at a rock. Like, it's a funny story they give us, isn't it? All right, here are the uh, pyramids, the fires within. Um, where is the Sphinx, I wonder? Yeah, the small pyramids. Here's some of the tech they got. They've got like that little crane. Um, and I'm guessing the Sphinx is on the other side somewhere. Bit of water there, but again, you know, I don't think these people built any of this stuff. There we go, the Sphinx. So still buried. This before they uncovered it, obviously. Again, you can see it's just a bit of a, you know, a bit of a shambles in here, really. These just look like they're stacked up rocks. Um, okay, the Pyramid of Cheops, of course it's not. It's just no mummy's ever been found inside any pyramid. And back to Cairo. And again, it's supposed to be it's this funny little town, but look at the buildings in it. They're the same buildings we see everywhere, the same old world architecture, oversized, mud flooded, and no explanation for how it got there. 
Oh, two Parthenons in Egypt. <laughs> Look at that. Um, actually, but we've got Egypt, Greece, Turkey. So it's this may be Athens. Okay, Temple of Feast. So we are in Greece now. But two Parthenons, all right? Two. Why not? There's also one in Tennessee. Let's see up here, all ruins. But can you see this? I can't zoom any, in any further. It looks like there's a buried building in the cliff up there. Look like columns or something. And look at this. When you look at this, this is all a wall, the whole thing. So you can imagine if that was covered in dirt. You know, this is what Paul Cook's looking into is these structures in England that look like, you know, they're old world structures, but then they've been covered in dirt and turned into hills and cliffs. And you can imagine that's what this would look like because these are big walls. Obviously suffered some kind of cataclysm. Uh, again, I mean, look at the how big this is. How did they stand those columns up, even if they could make them? I mean, look at that. That's like a three-story house. Again, massive walls everywhere and, and buried. You know, look, the top of it's at the ground level. Wouldn't take much and that would disappear, right? That whole wall. Here we can see this is a newer wall. And you can see, you know, there's just rubble everywhere which is where they were getting their materials from, I think. And here's the Parthenon up on the hill. And again, look at this massive wall. And how often do we see this, right? The hills, the forts and things, the temples always up on these hills. More ruins over here. So something, something went boom. And of course, no vegetation, really. You've got a couple of trees here. But that's it. Um, again, this is 1880s Greece, and look at the destruction down here. I mean, look at this. It's been completely just smashed. You can see here, into the, is it in the cliff? Maybe it's in front of it. I oh, know it's on top of this. So this was a big, big building built right on the cliff, and you can see up here, it, it was probably built into the cliff, unless... Now the cliff may have been the building, because look at this. Look at these are all walls. Walls everywhere. This may be natural, who knows? And they've built on top of it, but again, you can see how so much of this got buried and turned into what we're told are natural, you know, features, natural cliffs and hills and things. You know, it wouldn't take that much to cover that, would it? And no one would know it was there, but but Greece got designated, you see, as one of the old world cities. So tourism, right? Uh, some more, just random, you know, why not, right? Just the random front of a building facade, just standing in the desert, as you do. Okay. And again, now this is where we, we hit problems again, right? I mean, this wall looks like it's, you know, that's not original. It looks like it's been restacked, no mortar. But all these statues, right? Um, well, we're in Greece now, so they, they actually do kind of match, right? Because they're supposed to be Greco, what we're told is Greco Romano kind of um, motifs. But these, we see these statues everywhere. Absolutely everywhere, which is, I guess, why they needed to needed to tell us that, you know, the Roman got all this stuff from the Greeks, and then the Romans, you know, went Roman right around the world. Rome, if you want to, but here again, so this is what we see is just this ruin. So this is where they were getting their materials for, right, to build whatever they were building out of stone. They weren't quarrying stuff; they were just picking it up off the ground. Again. Um, Photo opportunities, old world, 1800s kind of clothes and dresses and, you know, not looking like the typical Egyptians we're told about, are they? Looking more like Europeans. 
And just look at these ruins. And again, we're in Greece now. Um, so very sort of Grecian with all the the pillars and things. But these people don't look like Greeks. Maybe a bit more Moorish. What do you reckon? Uh, the Parthenon again. I think that's a Parthenon. But again, look at all this rubble. It's just everywhere. All right. So what went on here? Looks like we've got a bit of pipe for some drainage. You can see massive foundations, huge constructions, and something's just gone boom and hit it. But it also shows you how well they were made, right? Because, you know, it's still pretty much standing. And again, just the destruction. Uh, the Acropolis, the Acropolis, I think. And again, look at this. And you can see here in the middle of these pillars, can you see these perfectly square holes? All right, that's, that's how they were hot. Because we've seen this for a while, that these are done in sections. Okay, you can see the lines where they join them. And they've got metal rods in them holding them all together. So a lot of these ones, you know, I've been asking how they stand them up. A lot of them look like they were actually, you know, slotted. Um, some of them are one piece, but a lot of them that we see in the actual buildings are these sectioned pieces. But when, they, when they're standing on their own, just as a random massive pillar, they tend to be one piece, which, you know, kind of makes me think they've got different purposes, right? These are all, it's all functional tech. Uh, Constantinople, Istanbul, no, Constantinople. And again, I mean, we just saw an almost identical, um, you know, building to this in Egypt. And I was calling the Star Wars building, right? Same stuff everywhere. Again, random pillar by itself. Why not? And just old world built out city again still in constantinople i mean this place is built out man it looks in pretty good shape doesn't it look like it didn't get hit too hard it's just completely built out oh there's a nice little temple on an island in the harbor why not Again, look at these domes, columns, I mean, they're just everywhere, right? Look at this one, looks like it's been half stripped. Not sure. And again, so Constantinople, oh wow, man, look at this. One, two, th and, and I mean, is that a vanilla sky, you reckon? But look, this, look at this, right? One, two, three buildings, almost identical. And again, they're the same as the one that we saw in Egypt. So I wonder what their function is. They'd, they'd be some kind of specific machine as far as I'm concerned. And this could just be the, a mountain range in the background. Not really sure because you can see these stick through it. So I don't know if that's if they're blurring that out on purpose or if that's natural. Who knows? And some more. And of course, if this was in the water, we'd be told it was a lighthouse. But it's not. So now it's just a tower, probably a water tower. Again, and you can see that how big these, you know, machines, tempels are, you know, compared to everything else. This place is just so built out, man. 1880s, Constantinople. And 
a few more. All right, let's get to some better stuff. Okay, here's one of those. All right, those temples that we were pointing out. Look at them. Antiquitec. See this the pattern is repeated here, and here, and of course, now this one, it's a bit hard to make it out as we've got four. No, but normally it's like a dome in the middle with, you know, the Mount Maru Tree of Life and then the four pillars around the outside. This one's clearly got one too. Unless that's, it's hard to see. <laughs> I'll have to get an aerial view of it. Um, they seem to, you know, be a representation of the, of the plane, right? So, I mean, I wonder if that's, if that's how they're drawing the energy, is sort of mimicking the system we live in. I mean, look at this place. Here's a dude. So you can see how big these doors are, right? I mean, look at this guy. He comes up to here somewhere. So there's intricate, massive buildings. No one there to enjoy them. A few boats bringing stuff in, taking stuff away, cleaning out the realm. Wow, the interior of a mosque of St. Sophie, is it? Wow, man, look at all this wrought iron. Um all these wrought iron chandelier light fitting things look at this place wow <clears throat> pretty cool like what's this some weird scary angel big Double domes everywhere, more domes. Um, this, I mean, look at this, right? Rapunzel, Rapunzel. You walk up there and throw down your hair, I think. Got ladders going up to this thing. Like all these internal struck. I mean, it just shows you how big this space would be, right? They've got these little internal buildings in here. So what do you reckon? Built for the worship of God? Or built to get close to God. Okay, here we go. So you can see one, two, three, four pillars. Mount Maru in the middle of the dome. And interior. Mosque uh, Sui Main. Not sure. Look at that chandelier, man. Pretty cool. Lots of iron. I wonder what they were really doing. Very Moorish, looking like, you know, this is how we pay power stations still today, right? So is this a power station? We're giving it away. But look at all the lights down here as well. Looks like a massive Faraday cage of some kind. Maybe some of these buildings were still on and sparking. Um, Turkey, Prince, dude. Is that a dude? I'm pretty sure that's a dude with earrings and a dress on. Okay. If it's not a dude, it's a very handsome man. Uh, woman. <laughs> mm, okay. Can't say that. What is a woman anyway? Look at this dude. Look at he. I don't know what he's got. He's got his stick. Okay, we're in... Uh, Algiers, I think. So back in Africa. And the same thing, right? Same lights, oversized buildings, statues. And this one's got a few people, but it looks, looks pretty cleaned out, this place, doesn't it? But again, this is in Algiers. This, this is now not looking so good. But okay, here we go. Look what they had. Is this? Um, okay. Vula Citadel Olau, maybe, not sure. Wow, look up there. Again, up on the top of a hill or a star fault. I mean, you see it everywhere. Tower popping out the hill. Striations and everything all the way down and then Massive old world buildings, freshly planted trees everywhere. So it looks like, like they've done a bit of a clean up job and moved the people in. Whoa.
There's some Bedouin people, some natives again with ruins in the background, right? Same stuff everywhere. All right, how we go? We're we getting to the end of this. I mean, it, it's all fun, but it's just all the same when you start looking at it. It's just, you know, it's clear that it's just one big old world civilization that we're building on top of. And as we keep building on top, like, um, the quantity seems to get worse and worse, right? Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, that's a rude picture. Oh. So there you go. That's a picture from Bedouin Playboy back in the day. That was, that was a bit unexpected. Boobies. Who would have thought it back in the 1880s? Um, again, right? Massive oversized building. People who look like they've got no idea how to construct anything like this, but they've claimed it. It's theirs, and it's just massively oversized. And, of course, because it's got this shape, it, it's got to be a temple. Domes, I mean, come on, that could be London, right? That could be Washington. But it is St. Petersburg. Aha, uh -huh. St. Petersburg, Russia. Here we go. Look at this place, man. Look at this. Is that the double headed eagle, maybe, at the top there? Antiquity everywhere. Massively oversized buildings, and of course, no one around. That might be a person. Dirt streets, but look at this place. Like completely built out and fitted out, but there's no one there. No one there. Again, a walled city. Very, this is Russia, very Greco Roman doorway there. Oversized buildings. Look at this spire. But, you know, get a cross on the top of it and it makes it Christian. And again, look at this. So this is Moscow, yeah, the Kremlin. Walled, complete walled, double walled, man-made canals. You know, these huge machine buildings everywhere, domes, onion domes, all oversized. You know, these fairy tale turrets. And again, this is Russia, right? This is all stuff we were told is from England or from the Islamic world, but uh, it's all in Russia. Oh, loading a bit slow. Again, people just hanging out. Don't know what they're doing in this old world city of massive oversized buildings look at that is that my oh, man that's a man-made canal got a bridge here and of course look at the size of this building man just ridiculous we live in a found world well found taken over something happened All right, that looks like we may have come to the end of the book. Woo All right. So there you go. So how is everyone? Did everyone like that? 166 of you watching. Oh, oh, I've left that up the whole time, did I? <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, Art of Dino, how are you going? Thank you for being here. We were to John McLovin, 13 Sunday, Zilla. Um, 1800, yeah, yeah, um, go check that one out. Uh, is that the Mind Unveiled? Very interesting, Cabbage Patch Kids. I watch the moon all the time. It's been doing a lot of things that aren't your normal average moon actions. No, I mean, well, NASA's, you know, job is to distract, isn't it? Tone Dial, hello, how are you going? Oh, thank you. Did you enjoy those pictures? The old world, it's just, you know, we, we get it the whole everywhere, right? 
um whole positive yeah yeah um you can use bricks as batteries yeah yeah you surely can hello diesel in new jersey salut bernie how you doing welcome i'm alive wash hands i don't wash hands not when people tell me to oh thank you virginia all right so i've been going 51 minutes all right so of course uh, go check out burn eye mind's eye if you haven't already guys Kevin MacArthur, hello, Knife Man. Thank you. Yes, I'm trying to find some old ones. A lot of the old stuff, you know, they're, they're really scraping the internet. It's getting harder to, to find a lot of these old pictures and old sites. So um, I'm, I'm getting a collection up, but I've still got, I've, I've lost a lot of them, unfortunately. The Scale Draven, thank you. Lots of love to you. Thank you for being here. Um, the old world with nobody about. Yeah, it's, it's always the same, right? Um, and then, of course, then we have the babies, right? And, and I could keep mentioning um, mine, mine Unveiled with all the Cabbage Patch kids, shall we say, um, suddenly pop in and then you get all these adults holding kids and they don't know, it seems to know what to do with them. Um, and then they're in the factories, all the kids. It's really, it, it's the same story all across the realm. First we had primeval, then medieval. Now we're in flu. <laughs> I don't know. Is it evil? It's just clown world. Because the thing is, a lot of these people we know they're not who they who they're telling us they are, right? You know, we've got all these pictures of the masks, of the earlobes, of you know, pictures that people have clearly they're not who they used to be. So if that's true. It means the whole thing is a show. Like everything, like like them acting stupid, right? Like the whole President Brandon um you know dumb can't remember anything that's a, that's got to be a show it's got to be an act so you know then you gotta think well what's the point here so it's very confusing at the moment what's going on but i'm just i think we just got you just gotta take it as it comes right um try not to judge things too much um thank you very much missy i'm glad you like them you don't know for the past, we're sure to repeat it. Indeed, we are redneck rebel. Um, <laughs> plugging in. I mean, that guy, that that teacher or dean of students, was it in the, in the US? That's I can't believe that the schools come out and backed him for giving you know bits to students. I mean, holy dooly. How long did the flood water stay before it received? Do you think? Um, I mean, that's a, I mean, well, probably a couple of months, but I don't think they receded back to what they used to be. Like clearly, we've had sea level rises. Um, you know, they reckon around four hundred feet. We've got sunken cities everywhere. We've got the maps with the different coastlines. So I don't think it ever fully receded. But um, I also don't know if how many people would have been there to see it recede. It looks. Looks like something happened. A lot of people either left, got taken, got wiped out, whatever. And then, you know, years later, people came back in and found these these cities, right? And started digging them out, found them all sort of mud flooded. That's what it looks like. Yeah, the Cabbage Patch Kids, man. Um, it was making me think of the, uh, what's that book called? The... Voynich manuscript with all you know it has lots of plants and things being grown from plants and we have all the stories of we've been genetically altered and manipulated I mean, maybe we're closer to plants than, than we've been told right um do i watch mine unveil i give up do you okay now we're gonna have to wait for the response bernie don't keep us in suspenders who's <laughs> why do people say he's alive um John Levi has a fascinating video about Mount Rushmore. Yeah. What happened at the school? I don't know. Um, is that the one with the, the uh, there's doorways and hidden rooms and stuff in Mount Rushmore? Uh, where did the, well, this is the thing, right? This is why the, the levels are 400 feet higher than they were with the old, but they didn't. I think, you know, the receding would have been them settling, basically, you know, settling into the low areas um, we're told the water came up from below. Um, and yeah, 
we, we've got all these sunken cities, so we've definitely got proof for it. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Shelley. <laughs> Fair face day. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Oh, that's very rude. <laughs> it's far like channel. Um, rebellion on, on Earth. Yeah, well, I mean, the rebellion on Earth is people just got to wake up and, and understand, you know, everything we've been told is 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 a box, everything. You know, everything's to, to make us do what other people want us to do when, you know, no one can tell us what to do. It's our, it's our Earth. It's our realm. We can do what we want as long as we do no harm. And that's the biggest thing that people need to learn is, you know, people can wake up and they're, you know, freedom, freedom, and then they go and pay their license. Like, you know, you can't have it both ways. It's either total freedom or you're, you're controlled by someone. So we've got it. That's, that's, you know, we've all been taught, you know, that to obey authority, whether that be school or, you know, teachers, mum, dad, whatever it is. And I think that's what we've really got to break out of. You know, we have the power and we've got to trust ourselves, right? Because once you grow up and you can trust yourself, then you don't need um, you know, rulers, you know, people who, who don't want to do the work do, um, but I don't. The earth is like a blob of water. It undulates slowly. Water from inside reaches the surface, then returns inside. A deco. Yeah, well, no doubt, yeah, it, it's like a big, yeah, it'd be a big system. Um, tuned in, yeah, tuning, yeah, tuning, right, dark city. Um, I mean, and, and that's kind of it, right? We've, they've made us believe that we're someone we're not. They give us these, like they do in Dark City, right? They they turn the, you know, poor people into rich people. But that happens all the time, you know, in this reality, right? People get made famous and suddenly they're rich. And they're so they, they do do this, you know, change. And um, are we an experiment? There we go. What's that? M? <laughs> two V, two V, two. Um, Professor Mud Fossil, um, I don't really watch his stuff. Um, I mean, mainly the, the, it doesn't make sense to me because he, he talks about the, the dragon, right? That's the size of half of Africa, but then he thinks we live on a, on a spinning ball. So you tell me how a dragon, like literally a quarter of the size of his spinning ball, how does that get here? How does it fly? How does it do anything? Uh, it doesn't make sense. But, uh, but as far as geobiology and, you know, titans and things, um, yeah, I think there's definitely something to that. Um, Mike from Stellium 7 does some really good work. Um, uh, to do climate change. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, um, there's lots going on at the polls. Lots, lots, lots. That, that's, you know, that's where a lot of answers are. Um, did I see the map? I did not see the map from Paul Cook's stream earlier today. No. Um, Victoria was under the border. The old beach shoreline was the Grampians. Well, there you go. Um, the Amid, oh, most dangerous book in the world. It sounds scary. Um, Google Maps being blocked. All, uh, yeah, I mean, Google... Google Earth, and that it's just it's so it's just a joke to look at now. There's so much, um, you know, uh, what's it called? <laughs> They're covering up lots of stuff. Thank you. Um, yeah, we get we've, we've got more coming on the dark dark elves and dwarves. That's a pretty interesting story. Um, giants are real. The flood was real. The description of the Earth and the firmament is real. It's like Bible's pack of truth. I wonder how they figured the creation story. Who told them? Yeah, well. The creator, maybe. I mean, who knows, right? Where do all these books come from? I've often wondered, you know, like where does this information come from? It's almost like we're in a game, you know, and there's instruction manuals and things in here. It's very weird with this reality, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Right, Rockefeller schooling and medicine and everything else. Um, the plasma world moment. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, uh, uh, vibes of Cosmos, good channel. Um, I definitely think there's. it looks like there's more land, right? We've got all these maps with extra land. We're not allowed to go out near the poles. Um, I'd say that's where extraterrestrials come from. So, yeah, I think it's very interesting. Is it 100% accurate? I don't know, but 
Um, I think it's probably better, more accurate than, than the maps they give us, right? Um, uh, cities and I was above ground for 300, 500 years, Aboriginals. Um, yeah, well, we've, we've done a, a few, uh, um, probably four or five chats with originals um, on Tartaria, Australia, talking about that and also the Strongs. Um, and there are stories about different cities being out there and out in the desert and stuff. Uh, but this is a, this is one of the things. Um, it's what we're trying to work out is there's some disjoint happening. There's they're playing with timelines. That this is the thing. If we can't look at this as a linear progression, and that's what they tell us, right? It's all bloody evolution, right? We started at dot and we're doing do, no, nah, no. Nah. This is a a realm of cycles. It goes around and around. It's not a, it's not a linear line. Um, so if we look at it like a linear line, then it doesn't make sense. Um, thank you. Thanks for being here. Wow, dog. Have a good day, night, evening, wherever you are. Hello from Santa Marta, Colombia. All right. Thank you for being here. Um, Rockefeller quote. Um, we don't need a hundred thousand thinkers. Yeah, exactly right. You know, they don't want thinkers. That's why they don't like people like us. Um, yeah. Rags to riches. Um, by them, they go. Paul Cook, Cook, go and support Paul Cook and his work. He's doing excellent work. Oh, really? Did he get the jab? Well, there you go. So I mean, yeah, I think he do, he's done some good work, but it's just yeah, some of the yeah, yeah, it just doesn't doesn't gel with my energy, shall we say? That's Putin. Ah, Brass Putin. Ah, oh, nice Putin. All yeah, right, Putin on the Ritz. Um, spinning ball, the call of the phony truther. Yeah, it, I mean, nothing. And, and the spinning, you know, the shape of the realms coming out, like NASA, no one, no one trusts NASA anymore apart from, you know, the NASA fanboy crowd. Um, intellectual, social community. Is there a danger of absolute grifters in our intellectual and social community? Of course, man, they're everywhere. <laughs> um, there's channels, man, who, who, who dedicate videos to me. Um, yeah, they're out there. But this is the thing. You're not going to stop them. And, and the way to change the world is not to sit down and, and, and say change world and point and try and make everyone else change. The way to change the world is to change yourself uh, because you can't change other people because we know this because if someone comes up to you and says change, you're not going. You're going to tell them to get stuffed. Okay. And everyone, so this is what everyone's going to do. So the only thing we can do is be autodidactic, self-educated, you know, make our own decisions. And then when we see crap and grifters and all this stuff, we go, oh, that's crap. And we change the channel and we don't give them any of our energy. And that's it. That's it. You know, and I, I, a lot of people are like, oh, have you seen this? And these people are doing it. I don't care what other people are doing because, well, number one, I've got a life. You know, I don't have time to... to, to, to to watch what I, how other people live or to care, um, I really don't. Um, but I'm also smart enough that, you know, if I don't like something, if it doesn't gel, if it seems like crap, I just don't watch it. And that's what we all need to do. Like, that's how you change the world. You change yourself. Oh, Julia Wentworth, thank you very much for your kind donation and your support. Um, so, yeah, that that's what I think about that question. Oh, my gosh, so many so many more comments here. Michael, hello, how are you going? Thank you for being here. Um, never straight out, yeah, NASA, right? Um, crabs in a barrel are worse than grifters. <laughs> what are crabs in a barrel? Um, yeah, this is the thing, right? I mean, you're never going to change the outside world. All you can ever do is change yourself. So just do that. It's just do what you, you put here to do. You don't worry about all these other people. It's just distraction. They, they, as soon as you start paying attention to them, guess what you're doing? not what you want to be doing, not what you're supposed to be doing. You're, you're, they've, they've got you. They've, they've stolen your attention. Don't let them do that. Um, yeah, exactly right. Stand for something or fall for anything. Zachary. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly, Zilla. Only matter if you... If you and, and this is the thing, right? Um, you know, when we charge, you know, thoughts as good or bad when we like, oh my God, these people are making videos about me. That's so bad. We, we give it a negative charge. 
and we literally put that thought in charge, right? It's in charge of us. As soon as we charge it as good or bad, positive or negative, it's in charge, which means every time you come back to that um, same situation, the, the thought that's in charge is going to take over and you're done. You can never learn or get another another thought then. Because every time someone makes a video about you, it's bad because you've already charged it as bad. You've put that thought in charge of you. Um, so don't do that. Right? This is the whole don't um, don't judge things as good or bad. Things can just be interesting. They don't have to be good or bad. They can just be interesting. That, that's, that's literally how they can be. Um, so that's one big thing is don't, don't, don't charge your thoughts. Don't put them in charge, man. Um, there we go. Thank you, Virginia. <laughs> um, crabs. Never let another crab. Oh, oh, okay. Is that what happens? Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we see that a lot, right? We see that a lot in this community. Life is what you make it, and what you make it is up to you. Exactly. Truly, Lynn, hello. Thank you for being here. Nice to see you here as well. Oh. Redneck, are you speaking seated? No, I'm perfect. <laughs> I'm a bit like that. <laughs> I'm great. Just ask me, right? Um, fig jam. Um, no species on earth with fur like a demon. Oh, I didn't. Do, do, do demons have fur? I, I've never seen one up close. Um, yes, there's one coming out on Thursday. Another chat with um, Jason. I just got to finish the editing. Uh, so it's tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, it should be out tomorrow. Um, things can just be. Yeah, things can just be. Divine Hazel, hello. Well, thank you for being here. If we come back white, then how would anyone know? You can basically claim that reincarnation exists because there's nowhere to prove it. Yet I believe there's an argument to be made about old young souls. Well, this is, yeah, who knows? This, this is a big question. And we do have people who say that they come back and they remember. We've got you know, lots of reports of children who... Um, you know, are born and they say they're from a different house and they literally go and find the house and the people. And all. So, you know, some people do remember. Who knows what's going on? Is it wiping? I mean, it's this whole thing again, right? We don't know for sure. So to to say it's definite, good or bad, right or wrong, it's just going to stop us finding out, I think. It's just an adventure, right? Better questions, better quests. The statue of the eagle catching the serpent can be on one statue that topples as one statue such so the eagle catching the serpent can be one statue that topples as one statue i'm not sure what that means but yes the eagles uh, i mean yeah there's all this symbolism right the, the the lions the eagles the unicorns that are always chained up um yeah marble oh all right that's what we want I vaccinated children in the in the house, man. BC doesn't stand for before Christ. Well, it, it used to, didn't it? Now it's um. Now they've changed it to something before Common Era. Is that right? BCE. Um, but I mean, how stupid is it having a calendar that starts in the middle of time? It doesn't start at the start. It starts in the middle, and you got a backwards and a forwards. That's just ridiculous, right? Um, Chuck the Canuck. All right. Thank you for being here. I've been going about an hour, so give it another few minutes. Um, I've never been mentioned on a live. Paul Foddy. There you go. Welcome. You've been mentioned. Thank you for being here. Um, your hand of bar moustache is so interesting. Hand of my bar moustaches are very cool. All right. If I could grow facial hair, I may consider growing one, but but I can't, right? I'm follically challenged, man. Like, woe is me. I think I need to go and yell at the world and tell everyone who's got a beard that they're racist and they need to shave their faces to make me feel better. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Campbell River, BC, home of the world's largest non-atomic blast. Really? Well, there you go. There's candles everywhere. 
Do you have any clue who secret societies worship and do they reincarnate again and again and again? Um, yeah, they worship um, um, <laughs> dark forces, whoever you want to call them. Lots of names, Janus, Janus, Dark Elves, right, Dwarves. Um, uh, the Demiurge, you know, is a good way to sort of explain it. It's just this, um, you know, it's an evil force, a dark energy, right, the yin and the yang. <coughs> as far as reincarnation, um, who knows what they do, but what they do do is they keep all their information um, and they don't give it to us. So when, so everyone in those bloodlines gets, you know, taught, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> gets taught like their proper history and their beliefs and everything. So in that way, they kind of, you know, have a big um, up on us, right? Because the, we, we have our history and all the information kept from us where they, have it taught to them. Um, who knows, right? Do they live old or we, we don't, you know, these are big, big questions. But, you know, when you put everything together with all these stories, you know, of the vampires and devils and demons and elves, and that, it all sort of seems to, to, you know, sync up into a story. Um, but, I mean, the, the best, you know, they're not us. Let's just say it that way. They're not us. If you don't get a bikini wax, oh, okay. I guess I'm, I'm, a, I'm a white supreme pizza. Um, Texada BC. Hello. Oh, thank you very much, Lindsay. Thank you for being here. Does JJ, oh, that's a bit rude. Um, remembering being a member to begin with. Nice. Remember, of course, remember means to put back together, right? Jacksonville, truly in Jacksonville. You look like a Jackson. Um, escape the realm, yeah. Well, this is, and the, uh, I think that's really what it is, right? It's, it's, but as, until we, we can think on our own, have original thought, and and think outside the box, like literally outside of you should we have these are where you are. Um, then I don't know that we can do that because everything, right? Everything we're taught is. This is what the world is. This is how this works. This is what this is. Um, and so the biggest, you know, thing we've got to do is deprogram ourselves. Oh, shoveling wet snow. Isn't wet snow water? No. <laughs> um, oh, no good. There you go, Chuck. you got to move out of Canada, mate. That snow. I, I tell me, man, it's not good for you. Uh, yeah, the world, I, I think, is is a big stage for sure. Um, I don't think we're living through a puppet master. I think we have free will and we're put in here, but the stage show is just to get us to, to go along, right? It's, it's the whole, um, group mentality, you know, if everyone get everyone to do one thing, Hey, he's come and join our cast. Right. Um, so I don't think they can make us do anything, but they can definitely coerce us. And, and that's what, that's what everything is, right? That's what schooling is. And, the media and all this stuff is just to make us believe that reality is what they want us to believe it is. And once we do that, then they, then they, you know, that's their false creation and they, and they rule it. Um, so there you go. Oh, crypto, the super dog, Akashic records. Yeah. Akashic records. So I think it's all out there. All the information's out there. Um, a few more. Uh, <laughs> not in Australia, there's not. We love sunshine. Uh, have you noticed the moon doing cartwheels through every day? Yeah, I have noticed it doing weird things. I haven't been watching it daily, but it's definitely doing strange things. And it's not moving normally. It's It seems to do like quarter of the sky and then get back to where it started. It's really weird. Um, how you going? Pants on the ground. I need to look. Yes, yes, that's something else I'm working on. The steam technology, I agree. Um, I'm, I'm sort of halfway into a one on trains, but the whole steam thing, steampunk. Um, I believe you know, this whole story they give us of coal, I think that's crap. I think it was all steam power. It was like all these, you know, trains and everything, all the machines, it was steam, not coal. 
and then they've started using coal and that's when we get all the pictures of all the you know trains exploding and all these machineries blowing up because they're they're not running them properly <coughs> the control of direction of human energy yeah yeah that's what these these people want uh when i just await the vampire and they say oh Oh, don't say that. You know, Sleeping Beauty? No, Sleeping Beauty? Yeah. Is that the one? Snow White, one of them. All of them. Vampires, right? Snow White um, was in a glass coffin, put to sleep by the, the dwarves and their mead. I mean, it, it's a pretty interesting thing. So we're going to, Kelly and I are going to be going down that, that dark elf dwarf thing. It's really cool. <laughs> exactly right, Tone Dial. So BC is guys before Campbell. Um, Kirimo Oahu Arama Khans. Now, thank you, Shelley. Is that the guy who who was showing some of um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> God, um, analog. Um, was he showing some of Analog's work, the, the clippings from the newspapers? Is that that guy? But if not, go check it out, guys. Um, but there's lots of lots of good research coming up now. Close your eyes purple in video past present. Close your eyes purple. Oh. Okay, three feet of love. You can feel the snow. You can feel the love. <laughs> oh. Oh. On the TV. Yes, and big, big love to Paul. Lots of people are going through crap at the moment. And of course, you know, Paul and other creators are not exempt. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder wah, 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 wah. Wonder. Um, all right, so there we go. I might say bid you all adieu uh, coming up an hour and 18 minutes. So just a short little live. Hope you enjoyed that. thought I'd say hello. Now I'm feeling a little bit better. Show you some pictures. So I hope you enjoyed those. And uh, tomorrow night there's another another uh, Tartaria Australia podcast coming up um, and a few other bits and pieces. So, yes, I shall see you a round um on the next upload so i'm just having a look is there anything else here the walls i feel like just wizards yeah yeah it's interesting stories when you look into the into the um dwarves and things thank you albert billy thank you very much um yeah yeah the moon the moon's very strange thank you virginia thank you to everyone for being here so have a fabulous day and i'll talk to you all on the next upload i'm just looking for a clip to play on the way of the out blah 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 let's do this all right guys love you all talk to you on the next upload bye for now being autodidactic the self-educated on what's actually out there he's trying to rediscover Research, remember. With what's gone in the, on in the last few years, it's like, can we really trust the information we've been given about anything? You know, if they're not going to tell us what's good for us, for our mental and physical well being, then why would they tell us the truth about where we came from? You know, because that's the biggest thing is people don't want to believe they've been lied to. You know, obviously no one wants to be lied to. And then the next bit after that is they would never do that to us. You know, you know, the government loves us, but does it really? Because we trust the science. Like literally, they, they put on the front for us on their, their tell live vision where they have their cast and they do a broadcast from Hollywood with their little Holly wands. But it's just a, it's just a front, right? Just like they put on the buildings. It's just a front. We used the, their foundations and then covered it with a facade. Uh, catastrophism used to be taught in higher education at the geology. It wasn't the um, 
crustal displacement theory, it was catastrophism and that there was many resets. So it, we're just starting to put the pictures back together and the maps and trying to add everything up because so much has been deleted. Tartaria. Where did it come from? What's the real story? It, it seems like, and there's a lot of, you know, debate about the word Tartaria and of course, you know, we use it because you know, it's, it's a topic, that's a word people know, but it's the old world. But the more we look into this, I mean, Tartaria, um, basically in the old encyclopedia, says it was, it was basically all, the whole Northern Hemisphere at one point. So it yeah. seems that it was not a country as we think of them, but more of a, a civilization, yeah. I guess, where yeah. there was independent countries, but they were all sharing the same information and technology and working together yeah, and then basically o over time during catastrophes it got broken apart and those um, people who like to take advantage shall we say sort of jumped in and, and stole it all. It's the same civilization that same Slavic uh, civilization and technology and whatnot or group that uh, later was Tartaria and then I guess broke apart I would have been right before of the world wars, right? That would have been the last remnants being wiped out. You know, the censorship that we see now, that's a book burning. That's just the book burning, but done on the internet. Burn it. Uh, time. You know, and, and the calendars and the dates, we know they're always flipping calendars around, right? You know, from Julian to Gregorian, you know, we talked about um, the Slavic calendar being, you know, in the year 7,000, we know that, uh, what, Judaism is in the year 5,000 somewhere. You know, all these different dates, and we're to call we're in the year 2022. But are we? And, and what does that even mean? Right? How can we be in the year 2022 if, if someone else is in the year 5,000 and something, and someone else is in the year 7,000, right? Right, the, uh, the grand cycle and why so many ancient civilizations paid so much attention to it and building the measuring the the megalithic structures that have lasted throughout all of time that's the grand celestial calendar to this day. And it's why they're trying to have this great reset yet again right now because everybody's waking up, so they want to try to erase it all over again. Don't ever try this at home. <laughs>